I'm Eli, a member of Microsoft's Core AI Computational Design and Research Team and the product designer of Visual Studio Code. We've all experienced this shift from explored design to a design process that is more so informed by API specs, moving us a little bit closer to the development workflow. Even in this shift, our primary expectation from both our teams and our industry was to produce a high fidelity prototype to use in testing or to be referenced by engineering teams. However, we have witnessed another shift where instead of exclusively providing a set of images that lack some of the critical nuances our users experience within the products, we are now empowered to explore our ideas with conditional logic and hosting while still centering our familiar design interfaces via no-code tools like Figma Make and Lovable. Recently, we've seen a push to go beyond building our ideas within an estimated context of our product or application. The shift is captured in what startup leaders call the new playbook where designs are explored, tested, and iterated using built ideas. Prompts become the new mode of execution and the lines between product and concept are blurred. Over time, we've seen that prototyping stacks have shifted from abstract environments towards direct alignment with the product themselves. The book Tiny Experiments encourages us to abandon the linear and traditional notions of goal setting in favor of simply trying something new and learning from it. In it, the author quotes that, the difficulty lies not in the new idea, but in escaping from the old ones. I'd like us to keep this in mind as we try to push the boundary of our design process into unfamiliar territory. To understand how to most effectively communicate this message, I launched a survey to around 40 designers. The responses are really interesting, and most designers said that they want to play a bigger role in implementation, but when asked how, a paradox started to arise. The participants were split on whether or not they wanted to improve their design process with code. However, a vast majority agreed that they don't expect to code within the next six months. I don't want to become an engineer. Code just doubles the work of the design team. AI-assisted building is great for high-fidelity prototypes, but designers probably won't check in production-ready code anytime soon. AI feels scary, and we might be going in the wrong direction. All of these sentiments are true, and these are very valid concerns and questions that we as an industry need to address. We must be willing to accept the challenge of our roles evolving towards the new playbook and find success in it. And success starts small. I have been a product designer on the VS Code team for about four months now, and I see us as a prototype for the future of product teams. Product managers and designers are expected to contribute code while also working alongside engineers to build the best product for our users. As someone who has not had professional programming experience, going into this role, I had to find ways to adapt and I had to do it quickly. By no means do I have all the answers or do I have it all figured out. In fact, just this weekend, I accidentally triggered a notification to 20 people that indicated I had made changes to 44,000 lines of code. So this is a work in progress for me as well. But I have found tiny moments of success as I too navigate this new playbook. I started by using agent mode in VS Code to make small changes to the wording across our UI. In this example, I removed some of the redundant button labels. It started out with just one, but quickly expanded to 40 places in the UI where I was able to make a change in how we communicate our features. Success starts small. Shortly after, and while being a little bit more familiar with our tools, I was able to gradually work my way up to functional changes. In this example, I was able to evolve our chat history states from one with a lot of wording to one with a new icon to one with new features like jumping into previous sessions and viewing history at a glance. Expanding on these small wins one sprint at a time, I was able to make functional changes to our product release notes, adding navigation so that users can find the information that they find relevant to them. But none of this happened overnight or in isolation. In fact, I leaned on the VS Code YouTube channel. It has thorough walkthroughs of each feature and new advancement in the industry. I also rely on Wendy Wilson's AI and design shareouts here at Microsoft, where our teammates and the core AI team share playbooks for experimentation. And we all know that resources are a great way to learn, but there are still a lot of barriers between design and code. Returning back to the survey, we can see that the barriers like lack of examples, unclear ROI, or disconnect with the design system are not the blockers that our designers are experiencing. Instead, the survey revealed practical gaps. The real barriers are the environment setup, security, fear of breaking the product, and confusion about the code base architecture. These are fixable problems, and that's exactly what an agentic workflow can help with. 
Across all categories, more than half of the respondents have never participated in the GitHub version control workflow. Without that experience, it's hard to feel safe when making changes, but version control is here to protect us all. No one can take down the product with a stray edit, and an agent can walk you through the process of going from idea to product contribution step by step. And it's the engineers who will approve your proposals before they can make it into production. There are just a few words that we have to get familiar with before we get into this demo. And the first is repository. So this is just a storage space that houses a product or an app's code and the version history. Next is clone, and this is simply copying and pasting that repository into your local machine so that you can start making edits in it. Next is branch, which is just another way of saying creating a parallel version of the code so that you can make changes to it safely. It's like creating an isolated environment where you can experiment with the code changes without having an impact on the product or anyone else. Then lastly is commit. This is just another word for save, and it saves a snapshot of your code within your branch. Of course, there are other words that you'll see in the GitHub workflow, and it will take some time to learn them all. But starting with just these four words, you can begin your practice of the new playbook via agent mode and VS Code. While practicing a product-aware agent assistant workflow, it's important to keep a few things in mind. Always keep your developers in the loop and continue to collaborate with them often. Coding agents are a very empowering tool, but they are not here to replace our developers, and we must rely on their expertise for complex tasks. With this and starting small in mind, you are empowered to test new ideas, experiment with your products, and orchestrate tasteful generations. 